Hello again, everyone. I'm here today with another Jackson's haul. I suppose anything that's over a few items I've been calling a haul. So um, I will go through what these things are and I will also do some swatching of uh, what we have here. I think the easiest thing to do would be to go with the book first. That way I can get the biggest item out of the way. So, um, so I also did want to tell you the context of getting all of these items. So Jackson's uh, from time to time has brush sales and they had a brush sale on Da Vinci and their own brush, um, their own brush brand. So these are Da Vinci and Jackson's brand. And then I had some affiliate money which thank you all for going to my affiliate links. That uh, really is helpful because I can put new products on the channel and show you them. Um, and some of that is due to you all. So thank you very much and I really appreciate it. And this guy, this book, The Creative Acrylic Landscapes. So uh, the uh, Jackson's allows you to have a uh, wish list or I think a favorites list, that's what they call it. And of course it's spelled, spelled the British way, favorites. Um, so this was one of the items on my favorites list that I, I kind of leave things in there and then if they go on sale, I might add them to my cart. So this Creative Acrylic Landscapes, I was looking for, um, just various books that looked interesting on landscape painting, both with watercolor and acrylic. And this particular one seemed like it was pretty good. And when it went on sale, it was only a few dollars. So I went ahead and added it to my, to my shopping cart. Um, I don't generally paint a lot other than abstracts with acrylic, but I, I love landscapes and I love painting them. So I thought that this would be helpful to kind of get me started. I'm not gonna flip through the entire thing, but I thought I would just um, show you a little bit. Oh, she talks about sketchbooks. And um, those look like watercolor sketchbooks. Those don't look like acrylic. <laughs> but I don't have a lot of skills as far as painting more realistic things with acrylic. And I thought that this would be helpful. So, and so there's some things about composition. Um, we've never really talked about composition too much on the channel, but that's, you know, kind of a basic thing that's probably good to know. Probably the, so kind of the basics of <laughs> composition is you wanna create a focal point and generally you don't want the focal point to be right in the middle. There is sort of the rule of thirds um, and this is actually nine different squares. So they've broken it up. They've broken up this rectangle in squares, both vertically and horizontally. And the intersection of those lines is just for, just from an interest perspective, people are generally drawn to those areas. So you kind of would like your focal point to be somewhere there. Of course, there's, there's always in, in one of those little intersections is what I'm saying, but there's always exceptions and, um, uh, you, you know, I mean, basically with a lot of art, you can do whatever you want. If it looks good to you, as far as the composition goes, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, and so there, oh, and that's interesting. There's some watercolor techniques. So I think that might've been why I wanted this in the first place, because it did cover watercolor and acrylics, which is nice. Um, but I did want to kind of increase my water, or, uh, my acrylic skills a little bit more. And these are beautiful. I really love these uh, these landscapes that are in here. Okay, so this would be good, sort of a step-by-step -step what you would do first. Because I am so used to using watercolor, and watercolor you kind of go in a different order than you would with something that's opaque like acrylics. Um, because with, with watercolor you go from light to dark, and for a lot of opaque mediums, like uh, just out of the tube acrylics, you, you often go dark to light because you can put light in the front. So that's just something I'm not used to. Oh, beautiful. Okay, this looks like it's gonna be full of really good stuff here. And my, my wish list or my favorites list of books is really large both on Jackson's and on Amazon. I have, I have a lot of, a lot of books I would like to get. And actually I do have a few other books that I would like to do flip through, throughs, flip 
walkthroughs on the channel because um, because I've recently found a couple of really really interesting books, especially ones on um, botanical painting with watercolor. So and, and more accurate botanical painting. All right. Well, now I'm going to get to the fun supplies, and I'll do, I'll do this fairly quickly, and then we'll go on to the swatching. So the two biggest purchases in here are these Art Graph, uh, I don't know, water soluble media. I'm not quite sure what they're made out of. There's there's sort of like water soluble graphite, but they're color they have colors in them. So I purchased both the neutral set and the primary set. And if you have not seen these before. Um, you can use them in a variety of different ways, and they're actually really, really cool. Uh, so they are, <laughs> they're called Taylor Shape because they were designed off of the, um, the Taylor's chalk that is shaped like this in sort of a little wedge where you mark off your line for the Taylor chalk. Um, but you can, so, so they are water soluble, so you can either draw with them first, then activate them, or you can activate them sort of like using these as watercolor pans, which is what I'm going to do for the swatching today, just because that's a little less messy, as you can see. Um, or you could do a combination, or you can put water on your paper and then um, move around your uh, little little wedges in the water. There's a variety of things you can do. Um, and with the primaries, in theory, you could you could really get all of your colors that you need. Uh, but I did like the um, the neutral set because I I might just want to use neutrals and not have to worry about mixing my colors. So let's see if they name the colors here. Uh, just magenta, yellow, and blue um, because they're I think they're really going for true primary red, yellow, and blue. And then these, this, so this is sanguine, ochre, sepia, brown, dark brown, and black carbon. That was the other thing. I did kind of want to try out the black, which was part of this neutral set. Plus it had a lot of really cool looking colors. So I will swatch this shortly with one of my new brushes. So I'm gonna go to the brushes first before going on to the other media there. So the brushes that I got, uh, let me separate these out into Jackson's and Da Vinci. So these are, um, they're called Petit Gris Pur. I don't know what that means, but um, I took the little ribbons off. So they're uh, not ribbons, but there's a little tiny bit of string that they use to attach this to it. And the last time I got one of these brushes, it was really hard to get off. So I did that before I got on camera today. So I'm just gonna take off the tops. And then these are um, genuine squirrel hair, so they're, they're not vegan, if that's what you're looking for. Um, and these, I have one of these already in a triple zero, which is really small, and then I got a double zero and a zero, because I still wanted them to be fairly small, but um, I wanted them to be a little bit bigger than the one I have. The one I have, I love, love, love. So these are gonna be good for <clears throat> sort of everyday painting. And I think that this one was more of a, like a standard size that might be more practical. They're very soft and I probably will not be using these to do the swatching. I'm probably gonna use this one, which I'll go into next. So I probably won't even, mm, I probably won't test those out today. I'll save that for a future day. Okay, and then this one, which I should have opened ahead of time because I'm like getting my hand stuck in it. Um, these are, this is rather, a uh, another Da Vinci Cassinio travel brush. And the Cassinio brushes are vegan. Um, and this is the square brush. And normally these are somewhere in the 30s, $30 range. Um, and this was 20 something on sale. So that's a pretty good deal, which is why I went ahead and got the, um, what, do they, what do they call this shape? I would call this like a flat or a bright, and they're calling it travel brush. <laughs> flat, <laughs> they're calling it the flat brush, okay. Um, so I'll probably do my swatches of these with this one. Um, and the idea is that you can close this top up around that. The only downside to these brushes is that they are kind of chunky. So they take up more room than sort of the standard travel brushes. 
All right, but they close really nice and um, I kind of like the security too that you have with screwing the brush top on rather than just um, pushing it on because then it's not gonna go anywhere. So I will be testing that one out shortly. Um, these next two are uh, Jackson's brushes. So this is a larger um, number two Raven brush and I have one in a smaller size and I wanted one in a little bit bigger size. So that's why I got the number two. And I think that this one is vegan as well, that it's all synthetic. Um, and it's obviously a quill brush. Quill brushes are kind of my favorite style. And this is an Icon 3 4 inch flat brush. This is not vegan. It's a blend of uh, synthetic and natural animal fur. So, um, so there you go. I'm wondering if, hmm, I might do some testing of these brushes that I'm not really gonna be using today uh, with some of the paints. But uh, let's go on to this one-off item here. So I got a Derwent pastel pencil in pale pink. Uh, the color looked really, really pretty, and I will swatch this out for you so you can see what that looks like. And then I did get a few watercolors um, in sort of neutral colors here. And I don't have any, um, what brand is the Shinhan, I think? I don't have any of the Shinhan Extra Fine extra, uh, Artist Watercolor Paint, so this is my first one. Um, and I got it in shell pink, just because I kind of want, I, I liked the swatch of that color on the website and I just kind of wanted to try it out. Uh, this is um, Chinese White by Rembrandt. I don't have a lot of white paints. In fact, I think I have maybe one tube of white paint in a lower end brand. So I wanted to get a, um, a higher end brand of white. So I will probably try to mix that, even though Shell Pink does already have white in it, I'll try to, I'll try to mix them so that you can see what effect it might have on color. Um, and then I got this Isaro Rose, uh, oh, Ultramarine Pink, that's what it is. And these are handmade in Belgium. And this company also makes really beautiful pastels. I do have a small set of their pastels. They're, they're kind of pricey, so I don't have a lot of them. But um, but their colors are beautiful, and I'm assuming that they're using sort of the same pigments in their watercolor. And then this last one here is a gouache from Schmincke, which I, I have never used a gouache from them. I sort of debated, I got a white, and I debated over which white to get because they had three different ones. They, have, they had a semi-transparent titanium white, they had an opaque white, and then they have this, which is a mixing white, so it's not gonna be opaque. And I opted for the mixing white because I did not, I, I actually wanted to use it to uh, sort of tone down colors and make them more pastel, uh, as opposed to maybe doing some correction work and going over some things in white, in which case I would use the opaque white. The semi-opaque, um, or the semi-transparent titanium white, I couldn't really think of what I would use that for. So that's why that's why I went with this one. Someday I might end up getting the opaque white, uh, but I do have an opaque white gouache from M. Graham that I use for, for the purpose of kind of correcting mistakes. That's what I would use white for. And I haven't done a lot of ocean scene painting, but I think if I did that, I might also use that for uh, the white highlights and the waves. So let me put this aside. I'm gonna get my little swatch book out. So this is a Pentallic watercolor notebook. And you, as you can see, I already have some swatches of various types in here. I'm just gonna to go to a new page. And let's see, oops, I was at the new page. I just kept moving away from it. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna go on this side here. So I have some water off camera. I'm gonna bring that in. I'm gonna move this book that I'd actually put over the water. I'm really excited to get started on that book. That'll be fun. Okay. So like I said, I'm gonna use this one for the swatching of these uh, art graph things. I'm not quite sure what to call them. <laughs> so I'm going to swish around the brush. This one might take a little while to get the to get going, to get the manufacturing material out of it because it was pretty stiff. Although it seems like if I'm rubbing it up against the side of the jar, it's doing fairly well. 
Um, and then sometimes I think I have all of the material out of the brush and then once I stop painting for the first time and go back to it, it's still a little hard. So um, I would say, you know, give it, a, give it a good rinse. Okay, so here we are. Now it's pretty pliable. We're, I think we're good to go. I also have a napkin that I'm gonna put in my hand so that I can wipe it off. So I'm gonna start with the, um, the, the primary mixing colors. So yes, that's definitely a magenta. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna rinse out here. And I'm pretty sure that these can be used along with watercolor. And there's, that's a really nice yellow. And let's see, that yellow is also very staining, it seems. Let me get that out of the brush. And then here is the blue. Yes, I would definitely call that a cyan type blue. And what I'm gonna do, since that blue is still wet, I'm gonna mix a little bit of the red in it. So you can see you can get a little bit of a purple there. And let's go ahead and get some more. Oh, the yellow is so pigmented, it really goes a long way. And then I'm gonna mix some red in with that and get sort of a orange. That's still red leaning. That's actually more of a uh, red red. <laughs> now that it's been mixed with that as opposed to a magenta, but if we mix a little more yellow, we'll get an orange. And that's kind of why magenta, cyan, and yellow make such a great basic primary triad because you can mix a lot of colors, more than you would be able to with a different type of mix. And then the last one I'm gonna do is the blue, and you could add more water here. I'm gonna do the blue and the yellow so that I can get a green. And of course you can, you know, you can mix all three, you can mix a variety of things to get different color combinations there. But that's just to show you that you can indeed mix them. And you could also, you know, put uh, whatever you've picked up with your brush on a palette so that you could mix on a palette. And then so I believe this one was Sanguine. Oh, which is lovely, lovely, lovely. I love that. And these are very, very pigmented. So there, there's gonna be a lot of pigment in your brush. And this one I believe is the Ochre. Again, beautiful. Beautiful, and now I can mix these with these to get more toned down versions of colors. And I might have to move this up here to, if I go down to the next row here. And then now I've forgotten where we are. So this one is sepia. I'm gonna leave the little guide up there for me. This one's sepia. And that's a very brown sepia. I've seen sepias that kind of go all over the place. Some tend to skew green, some tend to um, be a little bit more purpley. Um, sepia does not have a standard for what, it, what the color is. <laughs> all right, and then this one is brown. Oh, that's actually a really beautiful brown. Love that. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot of color mixing with these because I'm gonna get through all of the items I wanna swatch for you today, but I may do a future video of mixing these guys. And then this is dark brown, which is also a beautiful brown. That's beautiful, it has like a, a lot of complexity in it actually. Okay, and then finally, the black, which is very versatile in this form. You could draw with it with just the edge, and here I might actually demonstrate that a little bit, just real quick with the black only. It looks like I'm <laughs> flicking water all over the other side of my sketchbook here. So, and I'll try not to get that wet part in my hand, otherwise it's gonna be kind of messy. Okay, so for this, you know, you could, I'll show you, because it looks kind of like, kind of crayon-like, and then, it, it dissolves really, really well. I mean, you might still get some under 
undertone of the line there, but it's, um, it's very water soluble. Let's just say that. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse this brush out really well, and then I'm going to switch to a different brush for the paints here. And I think, no, there's still not enough room for the paints here. So I have rinsed that off and dried it off a little bit, and then I am going to close this one up. And they all have, the travel brushes have this little hole so that they can dry out while they're in the little packaging. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because these look pretty much dry, things dry so fast here. I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in their little sleeve so that I can store them that way, at least for now. But yeah, they come in these really nice little cork things that will keep them pretty well. Okay, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and test out this pale pink Derwent um, pastel pencil. That's lovely. Again, with pastel, you're always gonna get that dust. You can try and blend it in a little bit with the paper, but, um, or you could just blow it off like I just did. Um, and you can, I mean, you can try to blend out a little bit into the paper. This is not a pastel paper, so it's not gonna do as well. But, um, and I actually have a little bit of black still from, from picking up that other thing. But um, you can kind of try to blend it into the paper. And again, I will bring this up closer to the camera. And that light brown, that is my favorite. I love that. You can also buy these individually. If there's any particular color that you just want that color, you can buy them individually and they're actually fairly inexpensive that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this big raven brush. Again, this might take a minute to get the um, brush to get going. Oh yeah, this one's really hard. So. And people have told me before not to what they call crack my brushes. Um, so like basically when this uh, material is dry on the brush, you're not supposed to try and um, crack it, <laughs> crack it off because that might damage the, the ferrule or the, or the actual brush itself. Okay, I think we're finally getting there with this. And I think I am, I am going to go to the next page because I'm using such a big brush here. All right, so that is gonna hold a ton of water. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of, and sometimes these, okay, good. Let's say sometimes they go a little crazy, but that one thankfully did not. <laughs> okay, and then I'm actually gonna put, oh, these are all being so good. I'm gonna put a little bit of the white down here so that I can mix it. You can't even really see it with the paper. And ooh, this one went a little crazy. Oh, same with the gouache. I don't need that much. Okay. So first let me or swatch that and and this ultramarine pink is going to be fairly light I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up this white and mix it there and I probably need it a little bit more because you're not getting a whole lot of difference between the two there but I really liked the sort of soft pink color in fact let me open more let me get that Rembrandt open again and get a little bit more white here. Mix it. Mix it with that color. Okay, so there you are. There you are. You're getting a much more pale, pale version. In fact, it's so pale, it's kind of hard to see, but I will, I will give it to you close to the camera again before, before I go. Okay. 
Okay, I'm rinsing that out. Yeah, this brush is kind of overkill for this particular example, but, but yeah, there's that shell pink, which is lovely, really lovely. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of that pink, put it down here and mix it with a little bit of this, um, this mixing white here. You can definitely tell the difference in tone, so that's good. And I think what I will, what I will do before I show this to you is I will just quickly rinse off. Yeah, this this brush is way too big for this particular example because it just holds so much water and it's kind of hard to rinse out because of that in my small cup here. So I'm going to take the flat brush. This is the icon and get that going too, which might take a minute. And let's see, okay, there it goes, there it goes. Usually it doesn't take much once it's kind of dampened. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit more of this pink and then, let's see. Just sort of and it's all kind of concentrated in the middle of that, of the bristles there. So there you can see what that one looks like. And then I am going to get the other two wet, which should take no time at all because they're so soft as it is. So the small little one first. Oh, maybe I, maybe I was wrong. Maybe they, they will take a little more work than I thought. Trying to really thoroughly swish it so that it gets water all through the bristles. Okay, there's the smaller one and I'll go ahead and prepare the larger one as well. Okay, that one's being a little stubborn, but I think it's starting to go. So you're getting some nice splashy noises off to the side here. <laughs> and one issue I have with white is it really kind of takes over the water. Um, once you get white in there, it's it just, your water is going to be white. Okay, so here is this brush. And let me add a little bit more water to that. And it's a very soft, beautiful brush. And you can get really beautiful like the more water you add, you can really get some nice um, blending there with this one. Okay, so this was the, yeah, that was the smaller one and that's actually a really good size. And then let's see, with the bigger one, I think I'm going to, I'm just gonna take this whole little blob here and put that there and then put the white in it. Yeah, so this particular one, and you can get you can get fairly fairly thin lines, and also, you know, really beautiful. Just added a bunch of water to that. Let's go ahead and go over this stuff here. It's a lot of water. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder where that um, little bit of black came from. I wonder if it came from here. So there you go. I've kind of demolished the um, <laughs> the regular color versus mixed with white, but um, there was just a lot of paint on there. And I'll probably use this as a background for something else. Like I'll actually use this page maybe for an abstract or something and use this as the background. So, there we go. So I will show you these up close. And I'm still really loving that light brown. I really kind of like how it has sort of a speckled texture. It's really nice. These other ones are really smooth. That pastel pencil, really nice and soft. And then this is still wet, so you're not really gonna get a sense of what it's gonna look like dry. 
but I've painted over a little bit the Isaro color, but it is a very sort of light lavender, this ultramarine pink, and you can barely make out when I mixed it with the white, what it looks like down here. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I'm going to probably rinse off these brushes a little more off camera to make sure I've gotten all the paint out, but that shows you what we've got for today. Um, yeah, Jackson's is great for sales. Uh, they especially do occasional sales on brushes and sometimes they pick, they pick a particular brand and sometimes they actually do all of their brushes on sale. So keep an eye out for that. All right, I'll put a link to all these products below so you can take a look and uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to keep track of future videos. And I'll see you next time, I hope. All right, take care, bye.